All right, so we're on to chapter eight. Um, Henry had built um, Benny a new cart to help them to help him build um, bring stones to help build the pool. So let's see what they come to, how they come together and make their swimming pool. The boxcar children were so tired that they slept until 10 o'clock Sunday morning. That is pretty late. When they woke up at last, they hurried through breakfast and went to work on the swimming pool. We'll make a dam across the brook, said Henry. Here is my cart, said Benny. I'll cart stones and logs in it. Good for you, laughed Henry. First, the four children went down to the brook to look at the pool Jesse had seen. The water was quiet there and there was clean sand all around the little pool. It's big enough for a swimming pool, Henry remarked, but I don't think it's deep enough. He put a long stick in it to see how deep it was. When he looked at the wet stick, he found that the water was about a foot deep. The swimming pool should be three times as deep, he said. Then it will be deep enough to swim in and won't be too deep for Benny. We'll build the dam here with long logs and stones. While the other children started the dam, Jesse washed all of their stockings. We won't want our stockings on while we are working in the brook, she remarked. So she rinsed them and hung them on the clothesline to dry. So this is a good time to wash them. It was hard work building the dam, but the children liked hard work. Henry and Jesse pulled the logs to the brook and Violet and Henry carried the stones with the help of the cart. Now and then Henry was called on to help with a heavy stone, but the two younger children carried most of them. Splash the stones right into the water, Henry told them, but be careful to keep them in a line between these two trees. The children watched with delight, delighted eyes as the wall of stones under the water began to grow higher and higher. The rock wall will help to keep hold the logs in place, said Henry. At last it was time to lay the logs across the brook. Let's Let's lay the first ones between these two trees, said Jesse. Then the trees, trees will hold both ends of the logs. Good work, cried Henry, much pleased. That's just what we'll do. But when the first log was splashed into place on top of the stone wall, the water began to run over the top of the log and around both sides, both ends. Oh dear, cried Jesse. The water runs around the ends every time. What shall we do? We'll have to put logs, lots of logs on with brush between them, said Henry. We'll put on as many, so many, that the water can't go through them. They laid three logs across and three more on top of them and three more on top of those. Violet filled her arms with brush and held it in place until each log was laid. Benny filled the holes at the ends of the logs with flat stones. Such wet children never were seen before, but the hot sun would dry them off and no one cared, so it must be a really hot summer day. When the three lo top logs were laid in place at last, the four tired children sat down to watch the pool fill, but Henry could not sit still as the water came higher and higher up the dam. See how deep the pool is getting, he cried. See how still it is? At last the pool was full and the water came over the top of the dam and made another waterfall. Just like a mill dam, said Henry. Now the pool is deep enough for all of us to swim in. You boys can have the first swim, said Jesse. We girls must go and get dinner. We'll ring the bell when you are ready. The boys splashed around in the pool while the girls made a fire and hung the kettle of brown stew over it, stirring it now and then. Violet cut the bread and then got the butter hard and cold out of their refrigerator. Remember what their refrigerator is? It's a rock behind the waterfall. When everything was ready, Jesse rang the door bell, dinner bell. The bell was only a tin can from the dump. Jesse had hung it, with a tr hung it on a tree with a string, and she rang it with a spoon. Then she got the ladle and began ladling out the stew. That's the dinner bell, said Benny. I know it is. Come, watch. Don't you want some dinner? Watch had had a swim, too. He came out of the water and shook himself. The two boys put on their dry clothes and went to Sunday dinner. Let me ring the bell again, said Benny. I like the stew even better today, said Henry, eating hungrily. That's because we work so hard, remarked Jesse. Let's go for a walk in the woods this afternoon. Oh, let's, cried Violet. Let's go exploring again. The children washed the dishes and then started on their walk. As they went along, Watch began to bark. 
At first, the explorers were frightened. Oh, what is it? cried Violet. Maybe it's a rabbit, said Henry. Then they saw a hen running away through the woods. Watch ran after her, but Henry called, called him back. Don't run after that poor hen, he said. The hen had a nest, remarked Benny. What, asked Jessie. She had some eggs in it, said Benny. Come here and see. Jessie looked on the ground where Benny was pointing and saw a nest with five eggs in it. A runaway hen, said Jessie. She wanted to hide her nest so she would have some chicks, chickens. We'll have the eggs for supper. I know how to cook eggs. The eggs made a delicious supper. Jessie put them in a bowl with a little salt and Violet took a spoon and stirred them as hard as she could. Put in some milk, Violet, said Jessie, and stir them some more. Henry started up the fire. The big kettle was hung over the fire and Jessie put in some butter. She watched the butter until it was nice and brown and then she put in the eggs. Sit down, she said. Be all ready to eat when the eggs are done. Violet put the blue tablecloth on the ground and she got bread and butter, the plates and spoons, and, all the, ch and the children all sat ready for supper. Here I come, cried Jessie. Hold out your plates. Oh, Jessie, cried Benny. This is the best meal I ever ate. I found the eggs and you cooked them. Yes, you did, Benny, said Henry. Thank you for a fine meal. Tomorrow we'll have to eat bread and milk, said Jessie. But when tomorrow came, the children had more than bread and milk, as you will soon see. And there's Benny. Looks like he's playing a little bit. All right, so be ready for chapter nine, fun in the cherry orchard. So what do you think they're gonna get to eat tomorrow? There's a good clue in the title. All right, I hope you enjoyed that chapter. We'll start on the next one. Be watching for it on the slides.